Grant every Fijian peace, prosperity, and equal opportunity. Help us to serve our citizens with honesty, integrity, and without fear or favor. To keep the trust of those who have sent us here. We seek your divine guidance to continue to build a better nation for all Fijians. In your name, Amen. Honorable members, please be seated. Secretary General. Confirmation of minutes. I call on the leader of government in parliament, the Honorable Inia Serira Chu, to move his motion. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that the minutes of the sitting of parliament held on Monday, 25th May, 2020, as previously circulated, be taken as read and be confirmed. Is there a seconder? Honorable Speaker, say, I beg to second the motion. <clears throat> Honorable members, the Parliament will now vote on the motion. The question is that the minutes of the sitting of Parliament held on Monday, 25th May 2020, as previously circulated, be taken as read and be confirmed. Does any member oppose the motion? As no member opposes, the motion is agreed to unanimously. <clears throat> Secretary General. Communications from the Chair. Honorable members, I welcome all honorable members to today's sitting of parliament. I also welcome all those watching the live broadcast and live streaming of today's proceedings from the committee room and those from the comfort of their homes, offices, and mobile phones. Thank you for taking an interest in your parliament. Honorable members, I will now deliver my rulings on three petitions which had been submitted to my office. Ruling in relation to petition for inquiry into voter card renewal requirements and the use of married names. Honorable members, I received a petition from the Honorable Leader of the Opposition on 19th February 2020. This petition is being considered today as the March sitting of Parliament was dedicated to the urgent consideration of the COVID-19 response budget. The petition requests the following. To refer to the Standing Committee on Justice, Law, and Human Rights to conduct a holistic inquiry into the new requirement for birth certificates to renew voter ID card and ban on married women using their husband's name unless they change it by deed poll with a view 
to protect the interest and the right to vote of all citizens, poor or rich, men and women. Pursuant to Standing Orders 37-2B, the Speaker must scrutinize a petition to ensure that the petition is seeking action which lies within the powers of Parliament to take. As such, I have scrutinized the petition to ensure that, firstly, it requests for a clear action for Parliament to take. And secondly, such action lies within the powers of Parliament to take. Honourable Members will note that these requirements are elaborated in the second and fourth standards listed in the petition standards of my ruling on 18th February 2020. I strongly recommend that members consider these standards while drafting their petitions. Firstly, I note that the petition does not request for a clear action for Parliament to take. Honourable members, Understanding Orders 37 5, the process for the presentation of a petition to Parliament requires a motion to refer the petition to a standing committee for an inquiry. As such, an inquiry by a standing committee is an ingrained part of the petition's process and is not the action that must be scrutinized by the Speaker under Standing Orders 37-2B. The petition must request a specific action, such as a recommendation for a change of process in a particular matter, or for a resolution or declaration of Parliament. If that action is clearly listed in the petition, the Speaker may then scrutinize it to ensure that it is an action which is within the powers of Parliament to take. This petition does not request for clear action and thus fails in this regard. Furthermore, Section 6.1 of the Electoral Act 2014 provides for the supervisor of elections powers to administer voter registration, and Section 3 of the Act specifically provides for the responsibility and authority of the Electoral Commission over such registration and over any electoral disputes that may arise. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, Section 75.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of Fiji also firmly entrenches these matters as the responsibility of the Electoral Commission. I have made rulings specifically advising members of Parliament to ensure that your petitions do not seek to subvert the responsibility of the executive and any authority as delegated clearly under written law. I do not wish to repeat myself at every sitting. Honorable members, I rule that this petition cannot be tabled in Parliament as, one, it does not request for a clear action as required for Understanding Orders 37-2B. And two, it does not refer to matters which are the responsibility of Parliament. Ruling in relation to petition for Parliament to inquire into domestic violence in Fiji. Honourable Members, I now refer to the second petition. 
that I will rule on today pursuant to Standing Orders 37. I received a petition from the Honorable Linda Tambuya on 3rd March 2020 for tabling in Parliament on 16 March 2020. As with the first petition, this petition is being considered today as the March sitting of Parliament was dedicated to the urgent consideration of the COVID-19 response budget. The petition is in relation to domestic violence in Fiji and calls for a parliamentary inquiry into the steps we need to take as a nation to save lives and preserve our people. I will not repeat the provisions of the standing orders referred to in the ruling I have just delivered. But in the same vein, I note that this petition does not request a clear action to be taken by Parliament. The petition seeks an inquiry under what appears to be the presumption that Parliament itself will recommend the actions to be taken to address domestic violence in Fiji. Honorable members, the legislature, through the Domestic Violence Act 2009, has set out a legal framework for addressing domestic violence in Fiji. Furthermore, the government has also sought to address this issue through the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation and the Women's Plan of Action, Domestic Violence Helpline, No Drop Policy and other policy initiatives which have been discussed in Parliament through ministerial statements, motions, questions and reports. The Office of the Auditor General in August of last year submitted a performance audit report to the Speaker of Parliament on the coordination of actions for the elimination of violence against women with specific and comprehensive recommendations for improvement. These actions are the clear specific ways in which violence against women has been addressed thus far. A petition that calls for further action must clearly state what action needs to be taken and only then may such action be scrutinized to determine if it is action which is within the powers of Parliament to take. Honourable Members, as representatives of the people, you are drivers of actions and agents of change. You are already in a position to work with the people and seek out new and innovative ways to address serious public justice issues. Outside of Parliament, you may call for dialogue and con was conversation, but when a petition is brought to Parliament, it must come with a clear, confident call for clear and specific action. As such, I rule that this petition cannot be tabled in Parliament, as it does not meet Parliament's petition standards and the requirements under Standing Orders 37. Petition for Parliament to investigate Grace Road Church. The second petition was submitted by the Honorable Linda Tambuya and states the following. Grace Road Church is founded on hate. Founder, Pastor Shin O.K. Ju has physically assaulted her followers 
and has promoted racism in her sermons when she public called the Fijian population mentally weak and taught that her followers are superior beings to the citizens of Fiji. We request for a parliamentary inquiry into the presence, activity, and business practice of the religious organization, Grace Roads Church, and that of its 400 plus members in Fiji. In the instance where our claims are validated, we demand that Grace Roads Church and Korean employees of Grace Roads Group be repatriated to Korea. This petition clearly requests for an action which is not within the powers of Parliament to take, as it demands that upon the validation of the implied claims of assault and racism, members of the named religious organization be repatriated to Korea. Honorable members, Section 21.5 of the Constitution states that every person who is not a citizen but is lawfully in Fiji has the right not to be expelled from Fiji except pursuant to an order of a court or a decision of the minister responsible for immigration on a ground prescribed by law. This is a constitutionally guaranteed right, which may only be limited by express provisions prescribed by law. Parliament has not been given the mandate to limit this right, particularly in such a direct and targeted way through the petitions process. Furthermore, in relation to the claims of assault and racism, I note that assault is already prohibited by Section 274 of the Crimes Act 2009, and indicating, inciting racial antagonism is already prohibited by Section 17 of the Public Order Act. 1969. As such, it is the responsibility of the Fiji police force working with interested and or aggrieved parties to investigate and lay charges where relevant. These are the mechanisms the legislature has already set out to address these issues where they arise. It is not an action which Parliament itself may then take. I therefore rule that this petition cannot be tabled in Parliament as it is seeking action which is not within the powers of Parliament to take. I thank honorable members. Secretary Junker. Presentation of papers and certain documents. Honorable members, I have been advised that there are no papers for presentation today. Secretary General. Presentation of reports of committees. I call on the chairperson of Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defense, the Honorable Alexander. O'Connor to table his report. Okay. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am pleased to present the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons.